Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors, including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each week to bring you tasteful content, but viewer discretion is advised. Now enjoy the show. This week, we spend President's Day in Hebron for the Wicomico County Youth Rabbit Hunt. We head to Lake Forest High School to meet the February recipient of the WBOC Mount Air Farm to Table Scholarship. Scorchy Taws introduces us to a Westover man whose love for gardening can't be stopped. And we'll make our way to Georgetown for an oyster party 87 years in the making. Outdoors Delmarva starts right now. Welcome to Outdoors Delmarva, the show that celebrates our communities, our cultures and traditions and the places we call home. My name is Jason Lee. And I'm Lauren Hitch. Lauren, I just realized as we were watching the map video that this episode is kind of all about food. Hmm. Now that I think about it, you're right. I'm feeling pretty hungry. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that? Well, yeah. The whole episode is about food and snacks? Are you kidding me? You didn't bring anything? I. Do you know how I get when I'm hangry? I do, and I'm sorry. I would. Oh I, my gosh. Actually, hang on. Freeman, quick, the emergency snacks. Yes. There, are you better now? Mm -hmm. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. And now, here are Jason Lee and Lauren Hitch. If you're lucky enough to get a federal holiday off from work, you may just take the day to catch up on life, relax, or maybe take a road trip. But for a handful of kids, when it comes to President's Day, it can only mean one thing, the annual Wicomico County Youth Rabbit Hunt. President's Day, uh, kids are out of school. We got a good group today. Yes, uh, great weather again for this year's hunt. This is like the eighth year, so hopefully we're gonna keep up with our numbers we've had. Average about 12 to 13 each each time, so we will see. You don't see it as much, rabbit hunting. Uh, you don't think of it, but it's a great sport for the kids because it's active. You're always moving. There's noise, you're, you're always uh, energized because it's, it's constant. The dogs are, you know, if you have the rabbits, they're steadily barking. You're steadily moving to try to get in position. Hopefully we can get another good year in because the, the habitat for the rabbits is starting to dissipate. And uh, what I mean by that is rabbits like thick brush, briars, uh, the, the thicker, the heavier, the better. Um, and what happens as the trees start to grow, mm -hmm. the sunlight gets in and the under foliage starts to dissipate. So it opens up. And usually that means less rabbits. Rabbits find new areas to go or it uh, allows foxes and the predators uh, to take more of them out. The numbers start to go down mm -hmm. and you have to you have to find some new places. We keep uh, keep this tradition going, and if this runs out and the rabbits start to diminish enough, um, I've got a couple other farms we're gonna we're gonna move to, and and we'll just keep it going. If there's a parent out there that says, hey, I want to get my kid involved, how do they, how do they get involved with you for next year? Um, well, they could, they can contact me. Uh, they can contact uh, Tim uh, Hamilton. Uh, he has the dogs that we use here. Great dogs. Um, uh, it's Rabbit Commanders is the name. Um, and uh, Wink Sporting Goods in Princess Anne. Uh, he works out of there. Uh, you can contact Wink Sporting Goods. Um, or you could get up with me or Tim directly and uh, if you have any questions and be glad to point you in the right direction. Get out of the 
It's always fun watching kids get so excited about something that has nothing to do with an app on their phone. Yup, and the excitement was almost to our level when they brought out the coffee and donuts. Well, a surefire way to get us to do anything is to feed us. We've got to go check the Subaru again for some more emergency snacks. We'll be right back. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. We're proud to partner with Mount Air Farms to honor area high school seniors who have a passion for agriculture or the culinary arts. And we're proud to introduce to you the February recipient of the WBOC Mount Air Farm to Table Scholarship, Lake Forest High School's Kaylin Pippen. I was a dancer for the majority of my life and everyone knew I liked pink and sparkles and didn't really do much with farming or agriculture. So one of my friends was like, hey, come to an FFA meeting. You want to get more involved in middle school? This is a great organization. So I went and I told my mom I wanted to go and she was like, Kaylin, really? You want to go to an FFA meeting? I was like, yeah, totally. I want to go. But I fell in love with it. It was really just the people and my passion for agriculture and learning more about farming and what I could do in the industry really led me and wanted me to stay in the organization. She's bubbly, you know, I think it doesn't matter. Anytime she walks in a room, she, she kind of lights it on fire and, and she just makes it so much more exciting. Um, you know, I look at Kaylin four years ago and I look at Kaylin now and, and when she came in, we knew that she was special. We knew that she had a lot to offer this program. Um, and from there, she's really just focused on how can I continue to grow as a person. Um, but I think the coolest thing about Kaylin is it's not just about her. You know, this chapter became her heart and it was what can I do to help my peers um, and this chapter continue to grow. Um, hence why she's now our chapter president, you know, to have that vision and to be able to pour into others is something you don't see in every single one of our FFA members. Um, but within our team and within our chapter, she's become that friendly face. Like, there's kids that they don't like to talk to a lot of people, but they're willing to talk to her. You know, she, as soon as you walk up to her, you feel welcome. Um, you feel like you're heard. And that's a skill that I think that's going to carry her, not just through college, but also through her future careers. Kaylin's an outstanding student. She's always just gets the job done, gets it done well, and then always has time to, you know, when she's done either to help others or she'll start saying what can I do for the FFA or how can I help you um, so her academics are you know really strong whether it's in the ag classroom or any class she has really high grades and um, is committed to being successful well the FFA is a student-led organization you know us as the teachers and advisors our job really is just to grow these young leaders and individuals so that they can maintain this organization they make the decisions you know, they run the show. When we have our banquet, they're the faces. We don't get on stage at all. They run the whole thing. Um, and I think Kaylin has done an outstanding job with that. Her, you know, she is like Miss Saxon said, a servant leader. Like her heart is to help others, to grow others. So not only has she grown over the past four years, but she has changed, you know, the our chapter as a whole. So I definitely want it to be in agriculture no matter where I go. If state office goes well, I hope to run for national office and stay very strong within the FFA organization. I feel very passionate for this organization, as I've said many times before, but I want to continue to lead within it and I feel like that is the basis of where my career will come from. I think a good leader is someone who puts others before themselves and isn't there just for the title or position. I mean, it's great to have these wonderful jackets or have the cute little badge, but I think you should be there to help others and to empower them. And I think a good leader is one who really gets down on levels with other people to understand where they're coming from so we can help them to grow to where they want to be. Kaylin Pippen, for your commitment to feeding the world like we do at Mount Air Farms, it's my pleasure to present to you the WBOC Mount Air Farm to Table Scholarship Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Once again, congratulations, Kaylin. If you'd like more information on the WBOC Mount Air Farm to Table Scholarship Program, or you'd like to nominate a student, go to WBOC.com, click on Features, and then click on Farm to Table. Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. We'll be right back. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Spring is on the way, and that means gardening season is upon us. And in this week's Remembering Scorchy Taws, we meet a man whose love of gardening isn't hindered by anything. Honoring the life and legacy of Scorchy Taws, thanks to Shorts Marine in Long Neck, Delaware. 
Shorts Marine, everything but the water. His friends call him Britches. We call him one of the gutsiest individuals we've ever met. Grover Britches Weatherby of Westover, Maryland has no legs. Diabetes robbed him of those, but could never pilfer his spirit. So, the Lord, he, he blessed me, and he's the one that keep me, so I just caught the one. I mean, he, he could have kept it from happening, but it happened, so. So Grover Britches Weatherby strapped on his wooden leg, picked up his hoe, his rake, got in his wheelchair, and continued doing what he's loved to do for almost 40 years, tend his gardens. I don't call myself handicapped. See what I'm saying? No, sir, I don't. I really don't. I, <laughs> I might be. You know what I mean, but I don't call myself that. 68-year-old Grover Weatherby is a man with a constitution of steel, fed by his steadfast religious beliefs. Don't pity me. Mm -hmm. Don't pity me. Uh-uh. Because, see, with, 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 the, with the Lord, with him, I could do anything. Yes, Bridges Weatherby tends his garden from spring through fall. And even though every day of life is a bumpy ride both in and out of his wheelchair, when asked how he's doing, he's quick to reply. Lovely. Lovely. That's so uh, I ain't got no complaint at all. You know, I'm not looking for a whole lot of luxury. I'm just looking. That's way known him, that's all. Grover Weatherby, the man they call Britches, is beyond physical intimidation. A man who has extracted the maximum from himself under adversity. We just thought you'd like to know about him. He's an inspiring individual. Scorchy Taws, wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Remembering Scorchy Taws is presented by Shorts Marine, online at shortsmarine.com. Did you know that this massive bird flock flying formation is actually called a murmuration, primarily due to the sound the flock produces? Did you know that murmurations form about an hour before sunset in fall, winter, and early spring as a way for the birds to find their roosting spot for the night? And did you know that scientists believe the murmuration acts as an invitation to other birds to come join the flock for the night? Now you do. Did You Know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. You're watching Outdoors Del Marva presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Oysters are as much a Del Marva tradition as, well, just about anything, maybe even more so. And the Georgetown Oyster Eat is a party that surely knows how to celebrate that tradition. <laughs> We are here tonight to celebrate the 87th annual uh, Georgetown Park Company Oyster Eat. Uh, I don't know how many bushels we go through, quite a few. Uh, right now, they, I think they we usually fill the baskets like two thirds full, and we try and get uh, oysters out every five minutes to the tables to our customers. We like to see about 800, but I'm not sure if that's what the county is right now. I know that would be a good number for us, between 8 and 900 people. Well, I just hope everybody enjoys it, and I hope the oysters are done to suit everybody, and I hope they have a good time. We put a committee together for this oyster eat. Okay. It usually entails, you know, four or five people that that get together and, and, and try to make the event happen. Actually, this is my first year being on the committee. Um, I always helped out the past chairman, Michael Briggs. Uh, I tried to help him out every year, whether I was in the fire department or not. Uh, this is an important event to the fire department. So we'll actually start prepping for next year's orchery, the 88th orchery, uh, next week. It, it's a year-long preparation. You know, as you can see, there's a lot that goes into this, from you know getting oysters uh, lined up, hot dogs, eggs, T-shirts being made. Make sure you have enough staff uh, to run this event. I do believe we get the eggs out of Pennsylvania. Um, we get we get the rolls uh, locally donated from Walmart, um, and there, there a lot of people pitch in. A lot of people in our community pitch in for this event.
we try to dedicate it to somebody each year that um, unfortunately has passed away, but but contributed to the or Street at some point, you know, along their life. Um, we, we try to make that happen each and every year. Terry McGee owns McGee Motors here in Georgetown. Um, has always been a big supporter of not only the fire department but for our community, and it was an honor to do that for to, for Terry tonight. They, they get a good time, they come up, they get all the oysters that they want to eat, they get egg salad sandwiches, um, hot dogs, beer, but what they really get out of it is by donating or coming to this event, that helps us with our budget so we can put an extra tool on a truck or you know an extra AED to save a life. Um, and that, that's really what the community gets out of this. Yeah, just just uh, thank you. Thank you for supporting this event, uh, 87 years now. Um, we couldn't do it without you know folks in the community coming out and, and supporting a great event. The Georgetown Oyster Eat is one shell of a good time. And if you want tickets to next year's party, make sure that you are following the Georgetown Volunteer Fire Company on Facebook. We're checking out your latest photos when Outdoors Delmarva returns. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. And now here are Jason Lee and Lauren Hitch. It's time to flip through the photo album and take a look at your latest pictures. Thanks to our friends at North Bay Marina. Kevin Brown and his wife recently came across a coyote out for a jog in the Girdle Tree area and it doesn't appear to be camera shy. Connor Gutowski, pictured here with his grandfather Mike and Uncle Stan, had a great day goose hunting on Y Island in Queen Anne's County. Tracy Eager sent in this beautiful photo from Rehoboth Beach, taken near the Henlopen Hotel. And Cody Croswell shared with us one of his fantastic shots of an aerial view of Ocean City. We're hoping to see more from Cody in the near future. Outdoors Delmarva viewer pictures are sponsored by North Bay Marina. That's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for watching. Keep sending in those photos by emailing outdoors at WBOC.com. And be sure to check us out on all of our social media pages. We made it really simple for you. Just scan the QR code in the bottom corner of your screen. The DSN Outdoors Expo is coming back to the Delaware State Fairgrounds in Harrington Friday, April 19th and Saturday, April 20th. For more information, go to OutdoorsDelmarva.com and click the link to find out more. We hope to see you right back here again next week. But until then, my name is Jason Lee. And I'm Lauren Hitch, and we hope to see you Outdoors, outdoors Delmarva. Outdoors Delmarva. A Draper Media production is presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Shorts Marine. Everything but the water. And Bell Creek Equipment. For farm, home, or fun, Bell Creek is number one. This episode is kind of all about food. Hmm. You know what? You know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? Oh, sorry about that. Well, you should be. I... <laughs> <laughs> Freeman, quick, the emergency snacks. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Freeman, quick, the emergency snacks. I'm, I'm trying to... Freeman, quick, the emergency snacks. <laughs> <laughs>